we thank you and praise you for this day. This is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Lord God, because every morning you pour out new mercies, new mercies that never existed before. And Lord, we need your mercy now more than ever before. I ask that you will move, Lord, throughout this world. You see this terrible pandemic. You see the loss of life. You see those who are sick, Lord, in their bodies who have been attacked by this horrible virus. We see, Lord God, families, Lord, who are struggling economically and, and emotionally through the loss of loved ones, through the sickness of loved ones, through losing income, Lord God. Have mercy, oh Jesus. Have mercy upon our families, Lord. Have mercy within the homes. Bless the children, Lord, the teenagers. Bless, Lord God, the parents, Lord Jesus. Overshadow and move among our seniors, oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will send a word today that will uplift their hearts and uplift their minds. Lord, I pray that the word will bring forth life. You said faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. We send the word to those who are in the hospitals, those who are in the nursing homes, those who are inc incarcerated. Lord, they can't even receive visitors anymore. But Lord, I pray that you'll touch them, Lord. Send your angelic host. Send your word of mercy to their hearts. Oh, Lord, give them an insur assurance that you are God all by yourself and that you care for them and that you love them. Lord, we're asking for a move of God like never before. Even this week, Lord, we're praying for revival. We're praying for breakthrough. We're praying praying for miracle signs and wonders. Lord, we're praying for an outpouring of the gift of healings and miracles all throughout the land in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch our leaders, Lord. Give our leaders wisdom, Jesus. Lord, let them adhere to what we are learning from medical science. And Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you will direct our path. Bless the pastors and the first ladies out there, Lord God, and overshadow the churches all over the world, Lord God. Meet every need, Lord. Bless every member, Lord, and then bring in some from the north, south, east, and west. There are some who are struggling right now, Lord God, with drug addiction and gambling addictions and addiction to all type of things. But Lord, you are a forgiving God. You're a healing God. You care, Lord God. And you're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Move in our world. Move in our society, Lord. Be the lifter up of our heads in the name of Jesus. And even in this service today, Lord God, bless, Lord God. Send a rhema word, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the victory. We thank you for the breakthrough. We thank you for the manifestation of your glory here in Jesus' name. And let no one leave the same. Anyone who partakes of this service, transform their hearts and bless in a mighty way. We praise you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and let's celebrate our King. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There's nobody like him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's celebrate our King. Celebrate our He's the King. ruler of everything. He's the ruler of everything. Let's lift his name on high. Let's lift him up. Come on, Zion. We praise our King. Let's celebrate our King. Celebrate our He's the ruler King. of everything. He's the ruler of everything. Let's lift his name on high. Let's lift him up. Come on, Zion. We praise our King. He's worthy of all praise. He's the Lord praise. God and ancient of the days. Lord God and ancient Let's of lift days. his name on high. Let's lift him up. Come on, Zion. We praise our King. Let's celebrate our King. Celebrate He's our the King. ruler of everything. He's the ruler of everything. Let's lift his name on high. Let's lift him up. Come on, Zion. We praise our King. He's awesome and glorious, excellent King. He's worthy of all of our praise. He's righteous and glorious, so let's lift him up. Come on, Zion. We praise our King. Let's celebrate our King. Celebrate our He's the ruler King. of everything. He's the ruler of everything. Let's lift his name on high. Let's lift him up. Come on, Zion. Praise our King. He's worthy of all praise. He's the Lord God and ancient He's of days. The Lord God and ancient Let's of lift days. His name on high. Let's lift Him up. Come on, Zion. We praise. 
the King. He's righteous and glorious, excellent King. He's worthy of all of our praise. He's awesome and glorious, so let's lift him up. Come on, Zion, we praise our King. Righteous and glorious, ever victorious. He's reigning over us. He's a great God. Righteous and glorious, ever victorious. He's reigning over us. He's a great God. Righteous and glorious, ever victorious. He's reigning over us. He's a great God. Righteous and glorious, ever victorious. He's reigning. He's a great God. 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 He's a Our healer, our 
our deliverer, our way maker, our strong tower, our comfort, our everything. There's nobody like him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, my Lord, how excellent is your name. Your name is strength. Your name is power. A strong Hold 
Trendsetters, and she's a wonderful, dynamic leader in the body of Christ. Let's receive her at this time with an amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I tell you, the praise team was singing, Who is likened to the Lord? You know, like there's nobody like him, there's nobody like him. And the psalmist said that, Who is likened to the Lord our God? Who dwelleth on high? Who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth? And then he concluded, praise ye the Lord, praise, O ye servants of the Lord. God is worthy to be praised and adored. Lord, I thank you. I praise you for the opportunity to come before your people, God, wherever they may be, God, in whatever state they may be. Lord, both physically as well as emotionally and spiritually. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in your sight, God. In the name of Jesus, let my speech and my preaching be not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that the faith of the listener will not be with the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. And God, I thank you and I praise you, and I magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Today, the scripture is going to come from a very familiar set of scriptures, Luke 1, 39 through 45, amen. And the Bible says that Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered in into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake with a loud voice, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come unto me? For lo, as soon as I heard the voice of thy salutation, in my ear the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believe, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told of her of the Lord. And the verse I really want to emphasize is that last verse. And blessed is she that believe, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told of her of the Lord. The ability to believe in God is critical in our lives in whatever stage, whether it's spiritual, physical, emotional, professionally, uh, financially, 
We praise and thank God because we have to believe God in all aspects of our life. And on the surface, we can say we believe God. And on the surface, we can actually quote those words. Well, sure, I believe God. And, but in our hearts, and more important in our actions, we really might not be doing just that. I am reminded of that father who brought his son to the disciples. And you know, his son, the Bible says, was unable to speak. And in addition to that, his son was full of demonic spirits. And those spirits had him at time fall into or drove him to the fire or at times had him foaming at the mouth. And we know only the devil will do that to a person. And the disciples were not able to deal with the situation. But when the father came to Jesus, he said to Jesus, if thou canest, Lord, have compassion on us and help us. In other words, he came to Jesus and said, if you will do it, Jesus, please do this for us. And the Lord Jesus actually said to him, responded back to him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe him. And even though the father had come to Jesus, Jesus was able to actually diagnose what was in his heart, that in his heart there were some obstacles to believing. And you know, whenever God puts his finger on some aspect of your situation, it breaks you down. It, it, it gets to you on the inside. You may not show it on the outside, but God has a way of literally placing his finger on your issue. And when he did that to the father, the Bible says that through tears, the father cried out and said, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Help that part of me that really cannot believe you. Help that part of me that's having a struggle believing you. Help that part of me. And often the facts of our lives, the facts of the situation that we're in, erode our belief. And these things kind of wash up against our faith. Our was recently right before you know the pandemic kind of came I was down in Florida and I saw the wave and how the wave smooth and easy from the ocean would just kind of wash up on the sand and wash up against the sand but and that's how happens the facts of our lives the facts of what is going on the realities kind of slow and easy wash up against our faith on a daily basis and they erode our fame. It kind of sweep away at our hope. And it's a real gentle thing. And it kind of sweeps away at the possibilities. And it kind of sweeps away the word that God has given us. And in Luke chapter 1, we see that thing happen to Zacharias, the priest. We know that Zacharias and his wife, according to Luke 1 and 6, were righteous, the Bible says. That they were both righteous before God, walking in the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. In other words, these were people who read the scriptures or, and, and wanted to be obedient to the scriptures, wanted to follow the scriptures, had a desire to follow the scriptures. And, but they were, had a long-standing prayer before the Lord. And you know, that happens to us, that we can have a long-standing prayer, something that we've been praying about for a long time. And even in this season, it can seem like we've been praying for for relief and praying for God to stop. I hope we're praying. I do hope we're praying that we're praying for God to stop. And Zacharias and Elizabeth had a long-standing prayer. And their long-standing prayer was that they wanted children. They wanted God to move in her body because she was barren. And they wanted God to produce a, you know, a child through her womb. And when they were old, the Bible says, uh, that Gabriel the angel came to Zacharias while he was performing his daily tasks as a priest. The angel Gabriel came to Zacharias and gave them a word of promise. Elizabeth was going to have a son, and you're going to call his name John. Now, instantly, that word, not, the, not only the fact that it was an angel who had declared that I am the angel, but the mere fact of what he spoke was miraculous. This was clearly not going to be any ordinary boy. 
John was not part of the name of their family heritage. So this was going to be someone different. But Gabriel went a step further with Zacharias. He literally quoted from the Old Testament prophet Mal uh, Malachi. He actually quoted a scripture that says, you know, he's going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And so in giving this word, he also gave to this priest, hallelujah, he gave to this priest, hallelujah, a direction that this is not going to be ordinary. This is not going to be something that, you know, we've seen before. And as a priest, I'm sure Zacharias understood the significance of that verse verse. He understood the significance of this word, that God had promised to send a messenger in advance of his coming. Now, this promise was a major proportion. It was not just a promise for Zacharias and Elizabeth, but it was a promise for all of Israel. And a promise is a declaration. It is a declaring that gives you the right to expect or claim what is being said. But a promise is only as powerful. It is only as good as the promiser. It's only as good as the one who gives the promise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm so thankful to God that when the Lord gives a promise, that God is able to back up his promise. He backs up his promise with his might. He backs up his promise with his power because he is all powerful. He is all knowing. He is the great God. Hallelujah. So when we get a promise from the Lord, we're talking about you receiving a word. You were knowing that God is speaking to you through his word. That's a promise. Because when you get that word and you know that God is speaking to you through that word, it's your responsibility to believe that God is going to perform what he said that he's going to do. Now, how you receive that and how you progress, hallelujah, because when you receive that word, it sets you on a course. It sets your thoughts on a course. It sets your mind on a course, hallelujah. And how you receive that word depends upon how you're going to travel on that course. Because when you receive a word and you step out, that road may not necessarily be the smoothest road. You may know the end, but you don't know the journey. You may know what God said, but you don't know what you're going to have to go through in order to get what God said. There may be some challenges along the way. And so for the next couple, five minutes, I just want to talk about the road to your promise. The road to your promise. Now, the enemy of our faith knows that God is all powerful, but it, he designs to block us from the truth of putting God's word in practice. So as soon as God delivers the word, there are things that come to challenge that promise that was made. For Zacharias, it was time. It was his age. It was the fact that he probably had reconciled years ago that I'm not going to have a child. He had come to peace with lack or doubt. You know how we, you know, we do that. You know, we, we're good at that. Well, if something doesn't happen, then we, we're okay with it, but we're really not okay with it. You know, we're all right, but we're really not all right with it. And so for Zachariah, it was time and age and the reality of his body and the reality of his physical condition that was with him. And so because of that, because of that, even though he knew that the promise was of God, he knew that God had spoken this word and sent this word to him. He wasn't able to fully grab hold of the word, hallelujah, and step into that road of promise. He needed a sign. And God gave him a sign. He said, you're not going to be able to speak until the baby is born. Now, when Elizabeth conceived, just think about it. Zachariah couldn't put up a shout. He couldn't glory. He couldn't praise and magnify God. Even when the community found out and the community was excited, he couldn't even join into the community celebration. Well, the Bible lets us know that in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, that same angel Gabriel appeared to Mary. And he was sent to Mary. Mary was nothing but a teen girl who lived in Nazareth. And like Zechariah, Gabriel interrupted her life. 
telling Mary she was also going to have a child. And like Zachariah, he gave Mary tangible scriptures from the Old Testament that helped her to know exactly what Gabriel was saying. Gabriel was saying that the Messiah was coming, that the Messiah was going to be birthed through her. And Gabriel not only explained to Mary how, but he gave Mary direction. He said, thy cousin Elizabeth, she had also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing, nothing, not a thing shall be impossible. And unlike Zacharias, Mary grabbed hold of that word. And immediately she took off on her road to promise. A couple of months ago, I read about what's called the Silk Road. And the Silk Road was a road that connected the East with the West. It was a road that merchants traveled all the time. And back in ancient times, they carried their goods and their services. They, they carried silk and they carried, hallelujah, you know, spices. And, and they carried things that were valuable to them. But the writer that I read took that road last year. The road is still open. It's still open and merchants are now carrying technology back and forth from the east to the west. But for centuries, people have traveled on that silk road. They say from Alexander the Great and Genghis Khan, even to the writer. But she said you had to get used to on this road. You know, it's a horrible road. It's not paved and you know, there's no ATMs along the way. There's some weirded men that are looking at you a little strange. Some weird food, there's no bathrooms on the road. But she took that journey by choice. But the Silk Road was made a horn out of necessity. People traveled that treacherous road with their precious goods in hopes of doing better. When Mary received that word from the Lord, out of spiritual necessity, out of spiritual necessity, she took off from Nazareth to say, I'm going to the hill country. And like that road today, it wasn't a clear road. It wasn't a clear path. I'm sure there were people on that road that were not of the best. There, I'm sure that there were people praying on whoever took the journey. But she stepped on that road, stepping into her promise. And I'm here to let us know that the road to promise is waiting even today for us to travel on it. You have to decide for yourself that I want what God has for me. You have to decide for yourself that I'm going to believe what God said. I'm going to believe and take hold of the word of God. I'm going to do what's necessary, hallelujah, to get the fulfillment of what God desired for me. The Bible says Mary arose with haste. She didn't need an invitation. She didn't need nobody to tell her to step on the road, hallelujah. She pursued her promise. She went after what God has for her. There was an eagerness in her spirit. There was a zeal in her spirit to say I want what God has for me you know she didn't even know how her family was going to take it it wasn't even about Joseph and what he thought hallelujah oh I like the song that says I'm chasing after you Lord no matter what I gotta do because I I need you God more and more I need you oh God hallelujah and so Mary hallelujah with eagerness and zeal she didn't wait she stepped on that road of promise she stepped on that road and said, I'm going to travel on the road. I'm here to tell you that the road of promise has to be traveled in faith. We have to travel by faith, hallelujah, because we don't know the dips and the turns, and there will be dips and there will be turns. You're bound to have some occurrences that happen, but you got to have that do right mind to say, I'm going to hold on to the word of God. The psalmist said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't fear evil because why? The Lord is with me. You got to know that God is with you by faith. You got to understand that God is with you on your journey. God is with you when you step on that road. God is with you for the things to which you do. I'm certain that that hill country journey for Mary was not a walk in the park. 
They say that it was about almost 100 miles in the journey. Now, Mary joined herself, no doubt, to a caravan that was traveling. She didn't go by herself. But I'm here to tell you that even with the caravans, there were people that would try to overtake a caravan. There were thieves that are part of the caravan. She was still traveling. Although she was traveling with somebody, she was also traveling alone. There are emotional fears, no doubt, that were there. She was wondering about my pregnancy and what's going to happen to me. And, you know, what's going to happen when I even get to where I'm going. But Mary traveled by faith, believing the word of God. Because there's going to be some setbacks. But you have to see through the eyes of faith. There's going to be some trials, but you have to see through the eyes of faith. I'm sure there are people listening to me who had plans before the stay in place order. I'm sure there was people listening to me that perhaps on your job you were going to, you know, make some moves or you had plans that you were going to do some things or you had plans that maybe, you know, you're going to work out that promotion or you had plans for this or that. Uh, you know, if it's a church, a church might have had major plans for their church. They might have had major plans for, a re, you know, a redo of the church, or major plans for a new organization, a new auxiliary to be launched. You may have major plans as a parent you know that you were going to do this or that with your children you were on the verge of a major project whatever it was hallelujah you were believing God for something and now that thing seems so far away that same things like you know you can't even step into that no more you can't even hardly believe God anymore there will be dips and turns to your faith but you got to hold on to the word of God. You gotta hold on to what God has said for you. Oh, you may have to cry out like the Father. Lord, I believe, but you gotta help my unbelief because the tide of the reality is washing up against my faith. The tide of the reality is washing up against me, but God, I'm holding on. Hallelujah. Woo, Lord, I thank you. I'm holding on to you. I'm holding on to what you say glory to God you got to know that you're carrying precious goods on the road of promise oh yes what are the precious goods that you're carrying you're carrying the word of God you're carrying the word of God and you're carrying your testimonies the things that God has done for you in the past and I'm here to say you got to protect your precious goods you got to keep your precious goods near to you they've got to protect the word God had given you you got to protect hallelujah your testimonies praise the name of the Lord because see the travelers on that road they had their possessions with them they had their precious goods with them hallelujah and Mary was was carrying on that road the prophetic word of God she was carrying that road and there are times traveling on the road that you may be sidelined because of the weather you may have to do a little pit stop because of the weather I remember many times in the car where my family would be tra traveling sometimes the weather would be so difficult we'd have to pull to the side of the road in order for that difficulty that difficult weather to pass by well, we did allow that difficult weather to pass by, but we never got out of the car, left our valuables, and went someplace else. No, 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 you always carry your valuables with you. And I'm telling you that as difficult as it may get, as incumbent as your situation may get, oh, there may be a storm cloud over your situation, but you got to hold your testimony. You got to hold your promises. Oh, you may have to go to the mirror and speak it to yourself because maybe right now there's nobody in your house it's just you but God is with you go to your bathroom go to your bedroom look in your mirror say God I'm holding on to my testimony they're precious to me God I'm holding on to the word it's precious to me God I'm holding fast to what you told me because I believe you I believe you're going to bring it to God. You have to value your testimony. The word that God has given you. 
You got to keep it close to your heart. You got to rehearse it. You got to declare it. Even if you declare it to yourself, you got to declare it. The road of promise brings you fulfillment. Your desire in and confidence in God. We know the scripture, Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I have towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. Mary desired in was to build her faith by seeing the miracle that God had done through Elizabeth. She had gone through and God had brought her into her desired end. And she gained confidence in God. God is true to his word. He is the almighty God. The Bible lets us know that there is a process that occurs. Tribulation worketh patience, patience experience, and experience hope. And when you travel by faith down that road to promise, it works within you patience. And then patience worth experience and experience hope. And that hope brings you a fulfillment because you've arrived at the place where God has for you. And whenever you get an experience, whenever you get another testimony, hallelujah, you get another hope in God. Oh, you're able to say, hope thou in God. You know, the psalmist said his, his spirit was, you know, messed up because of something that he was going through. But he said, so why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God. And see, once you experience some things and you get a testimony, that adds to your hope in God. The road to promise brings joy. Thank you, Lord. It brings joy. Bless the name of Jesus. It brings joy. When Mary arrived at her destination, she wasn't expecting what happened. The Bible said that John the Baptist in Elizabeth's womb responded to the presence of the Messiah inside Mary. Woo, my God. You know, I often, you know, want to visualize certain things. I would love to do movies of certain aspects of certain things. But the dynamics of this experience with these women was so dynamic, so played out. And Elizabeth's response wasn't quiet. It wasn't, you know, reserved. Uh, you know, a lot of times we want to think of the Bible characters as just reserve and passion. But the Bible says that she cried out with a loud voice. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The two women had church all by themselves. Oh, but it wasn't really by themselves because the Holy Ghost stepped into that experience. The Holy Ghost, hallelujah, hallelujah, walked through that house in them and through them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. It was joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Did they begin to, uh, Elizabeth began to prophesy. She was filled with the Holy Ghost. Mary, hallelujah, received the joy of the Lord. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Elizabeth's response was anything but quiet. Elizabeth spoke with a loud voice. See, the enemy tries to trick us into thinking that the road to promise is hard, that the road to promise is fearful, the road to promise is sorrowful, the road to promise is just laden with realities and doesn't have any rewards. But the devil is a liar. God does reward his people. God does step into our situation. God does give us promise. God does give us hope. God does bless his people. Because the road of promise brings blessing. The Lord said through Elizabeth in a prophetic word to Mary, Bless Mary, are you? Blessed is she that believe what the Lord said. See, when we believe what the Lord said, when we take hold of the word of God, when we believe the prophetic word of God, the Lord blesses us. The Lord crowns us with his blessing. And she said to Mary, there will be a performance of those things which were spoken to you by the Lord. Glory to God. Oh, bless Jesus, that when you step on that road to promise and you begin traveling on that road by faith, hallelujah, God will see you through the dips and the turns. God will see you through, hallelujah, and you shall receive. And then at the end, he don't have to do it. He don't have to because the word itself was a promise.
this. But despite that, he stepped into a limb and blessed her. Glory to God. He blessed her for her obedience. He blessed her for her zeal. He blessed her for what she did. Thank you, Jesus. Just think how Zacharias fell. Hallelujah. In that house with those women, he could not join in the celebration. They were having church. The Holy Ghost stepped in. Hallelujah. But he could not actively participate. He did not actively partake. I'm speaking to myself, and I'm speaking to those that are listening. The road to promise may be winding. There may have been some things that God was, you were on the verge of. You were on the verge of completing. The, the cloud, you know, had lifted, and there was sunshine shining. And you could just see and imagine that you were going to walk into this new thing. You were going to do this, and you were going to go here, and you were going to go there. And now it seems like the cloud has overtaken. Then it seemed like what you thought you were going to do, you may not never get back to doing it. Well, I'm here to let you know. He didn't bring you this far, hallelujah, to leave you anywhere. God has a specific direction. God has a specific plan, hallelujah, glory to God. And that road to promise as we as believers are marching forward to what God has for us, God will bring us to that expected end. And when we get there, we're going to have another shouting good time. We're going to have another hallelujah party with the Lord, glory to God. Because hallelujah, God is going to bless because we have believed his word held fast to his word, and God has seen us through. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you, hallelujah, glory to God, that those promises that God has given to you, when God has spoken to you, and that word has resonated with you, and you know that that was God speaking to you, declaring certain things, hold fast to the word of God. Hold fast to the promises of God. Don't hold back. Step on that road of promise. Regardless of the fact that you don't see the end. You don't know what's going to happen. But by faith, you're taking hold of it. By faith, hallelujah, you're traveling down the road. Hold those testimonies dear to you. Hold that word close to your heart. Rehearse that word to yourself. Speak that word to yourself. And I promise, because of the word of God, I can stand because God is a promiser that backs up his promises. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. I magnify you for being God all by yourself. I give you glory and I honor you. And God, anyone under the sound of my voice that has allowed the, the current of this reality to rub up against their faith, I pray for them, God. I pray for them, God, that you would help their unbelief. You would rebuke that doubt, oh God. Bring them closer, oh God. Let them have a renewed faith, oh God. Oh God, you will renew their faith. Oh God, so they can mount up with wings as an eagle again. They can run and not be weary. They can walk and not faint. Oh God, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so I thank you, God. I thank you, God, because we're still on that road, God. Oh God, despite what's happening, we're on the road to promise and we shall obtain, we shall receive, in Jesus' name, thank God, amen. Say that. 
love you more than
Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give God a praise right now. You can stand up and give a hand clap, or you can say amen, or send some waves or some hearts. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be exalted. Do you love the Lord? Is he more than anything? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless the King of glory. Bless the King of kings. He's worthy. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. You're worthy of all praise. You're worthy of all glory. We're worthy of all honor. Hallelujah. Right there where you are. Give him praise. Open up your mouth and bless him. Come on and send some amens. Come on and lift up those hands. Come on and send some hearts. Come on and just let everybody know that we're here to engage and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise your holy name. We bless you. Hallelujah. We thank God for the move of God this morning. And we praise the Lord for the mighty word that we received from Mother Herndon. Yes, we are on that road of promise. And let us continue to march. Amen. We're standing on the promises of God. We're standing on the promises of Christ our King. Through the eternal ages, we're going to let our praises ring. Glory to the highest. I will shout and sing. I'm standing on the promises of God. And so I want you to keep your head up. I want you to continue to give God praise, glory, and honor. I want you to share this with others. Amen. And I want to see you hopefully on Wednesdays for our Bible. Bible study at 7 30 p.m. Praise the Lord. I'm Reverend Dr. Estead Herndon and I love you. Hallelujah. Temple loves you and I hope that even after this pandemic is over you will make some time to come by and visit us at 11 o'clock a.m. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the move of your spirit. I pray that this word will take root in the hearts of these who are, who've heard the message. Lord, lift up their heads and their hearts. Let them know that you love them and that you care for them. And Lord, if there's anyone who have sinned or fallen short, I pray you'll give them a heart to repent right now and ask you into their hearts and turn and know that you love them. Even if they're down, regardless of how they feel, you care for them. And I praise you for your abounding grace and mercy. Be the lift up there of their heads right now and we thank you for the powerful promises that we have in you keep us and cover us in jesus name and we thank you now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh within us unto him be glory and dominion throughout all ages world without end amen god bless you Hallelujah Temple is a religious, nonprofit organization. Our heartfelt thanks goes to everyone who continues to support this ministry, whether through Givelify or by mail at 1 Dogwood Street, Park Forest, Illinois, 60466. Your contribution to Hallelujah Temple helps further the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Stay connected to us through our Facebook page for more words from our leadership.